All right, back here on the program. Phone lines are open, 737-7767. So far, nobody taking us up on that offer tonight. Chime in on the program if you would like, though. Over the weekend, John Burton caught up with Titan secondary coach Deshea Townsend. He's a guy who was a great player in the NFL for Dick LeBeau. Now he works into a coaching job under Dick LeBeau here in Tennessee. He's got high hopes for what the Titans can do in the secondary. Check out John and Deshea. Deshea Townsend, Super Bowl champion, former Alabama Crimson Tide, and now secondary coach of the Tennessee Titans. A couple practices in. Uh, how are things going? It's going great. You know, anytime you get the opportunity to come out on the field and perfect your craft, that's what you want. This is where you get better. You know, no matter how much you do drills in the summer, no, no matter how much you're in the weight room, this is where you define your craft. And you have to do it in this heat. You have to do it in this, this type of setting for us to build the team that we want to be. Now you're a guy, obviously, that played for Dick LeBeau. Now you're coaching with him. What's that transition been like for you? It's been great. You know, a great opportunity. You get the opportunity to play for one of the best to ever do it. Then you get the opportunity to see on the other side how he thinks, how he prepares, how he plans. And it just makes you appreciate what he has done for you to get you to this point. But it also makes you appreciate how it's going to make you a better coach. So much talk about the secondary. And obviously, uh, your, your unit's play is crucial to that yeah. pass rush. Right. Guys being able to hold their coverages so the pass rush can get home and affect the quarterback. Uh, how key is that for uh, your unit this year? It, it's, it's always key. You know, no, no matter when you're in the secondary from playing it or coaching it, uh, I feel like we're the most important unit on the field. You know, uh, I typically always like to say, you know, the, the person that doesn't understand football, um, when they see a long run, it's the secondary. And if they see a long pass, it's the secondary because we're probably the person that's chasing it. Um, but for us, it's, that has to be our mindset. You know, and no matter how we play, we have to play at a consistent, high level week in and week out. There's been a lot of talk about the safety position. You got Rashad Johnson, yeah. a ball hawking safety. You got Kevin Byard, yeah. local kid out of MTSU. And of course, uh, Denoris Searcy. Uh, how are those guys stacking up? Uh, they're doing well. You know, a great competition. One thing I believe in and how I was brought up playing ball, this competition makes you the better player you can be. When you have a person beside, behind you and beside you that's pushing you, it's going to make you better. And those guys are doing what it takes to be a pro. You know, um, Rashad's been in the league for a while. He's played at a high level. Cersei is his second year in this defense. He's going to be a really good player. And Kevin, he's, he's a sharp young rookie. You know? So you have those guys to bring that young guy along. And then you have other guys like Huff and Stafford who are coming along as well. So there's a lot of good competition in the room. It's going to make us a better unit. I'm sure it's good to get the guys out on the field these first couple of days. But, of course, tomorrow... Oh, yeah. The pads come on. That's oh, yeah. where the rubber meets the road. That's when we find out who really wants to play football, right? It does. You know, you get rid of all the short pants, all the Americans, and, you know, receivers really going up to catch the ball. And now they know they can be hit. It's a different mindset when, when you have to do it at a level and be tackled. But it's good for everyone. Um, it teaches you how to push yourself. Uh, we're going to have to be great tacklers in the secondary. But, you know, this is football. You know, this is what separates people from that want to play it and people that talk about it. And we get the opportunity to put the pads on tomorrow. A new term, short. Short pants, all Americans. Talk to Shane Townsend. Always great to see you, my always, friend. Always, always. Great having you here, man. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. All right. To Shane Townsend talking with John over the weekend. He is an impactful guy on this coaching staff because he's played it. He's done it. He's done it successfully. Now he gets to impart some of that wisdom, some of that experience on the guys in the defensive backfield. And that's important to have guys. And you hear this all the time from this Titans team talking about the coaches that are teaching them and how good of teachers they are and the fact that they understand being there. Deshea is certainly one of those guys. Dick LeBeau has about as much respect from players as anybody I've ever seen. Players love Dick LeBeau. This is a guy who's 78 years old, who was a Hall of Fame player. He's been a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator. He's essentially the architect of the 3-4 defense, at least in the way we know it today. When he walks into a room, he just commands respect commands the attention of players. And you hear that all the time, that those guys are locked into what he said. And I, I think that's exciting if you're a Titans fan because now it is completely his defense this year. It's going to be a more complicated, a more aggressive style of defense than probably what we saw the last couple of years under Ray Horton. And Ray Horton did a good job, but he's not Dick LeBeau. And the th story you hear oftentimes from players is you walk in and very early on 
when Dick LeBeau stands at the front of the room, he asks some questions about, uh, have you heard about the fireside blitz or this or that? And guys will say, yeah, sure, I, I know what that is. And LeBeau's response is, I invented that. That's the type of cachet that this guy has because he has that experience and he has done those types of things. And so it's a little different when one guy walks into the room and says, okay, today we're going to work on this. It's all totally different story when LeBeau walks into the room and said, I created this. Today we're going to perfect it. And that's what the Titans have in their defensive coordinator. Another guy that falls into that category, I think, is Russ Grimm on the offensive line. This is an offensive line that has struggled here in Tennessee since Mike Munchak went from being the offensive line coach to being the head coach. They have not been able to piece it together and gel and be effective ever since that happened. And that's now going back six seasons. Three with Munchak as head coach, two with Wisenhunt, at least starting as the head coach, and now this season under Mike Malarkey. That is a long time to be piecing together an offensive line. So what did they need? They needed another guy like Munchak, a guy who commands respect, has been in there, and can teach it. Russ Grimm is that guy. He is a really, really good coach. He was a really, really good player. And he understands what these guys are going through. As Taylor Lewan told me the other day, he will tell you what you did or what you didn't do and help you correct the mistakes, but he does it in a respectful way. Sometimes coaches will jump all over you, and that's not necessarily the best way for some guys to work. Grimm is taking the teaching approach with these guys. And so far, they seem to feel like they're responding well to it. It wasn't a great day yesterday, but again, fixing the mistakes, they bounced right back and had a darn good day today. That's the type of stuff when you're dealing with an offensive line. Help them to see the mistakes, because the mistakes are going to happen and then help them get better. And that's what this coaching staff is trying to do. Another example of that, Terry Rabisky, the offensive coordinator. He is a guy that one has worked a lot with Mike Malarkey, so those two guys are in lockstep in what they believe in terms of their offensive philosophy. But the other thing about Rabisky is what does he most associate himself with as a position coach or within the offense? He was a receiver. He's coached receivers a lot in his career. What is the unit offensively, besides the offensive line, that needs the most help? It's receiver. And so you bring in a guy like Terry Rabisky to be all over them as the offensive coordinator, Bob Bertkowski to be all over them in the receiver room. That can be useful. That can be valuable as you try to change what this team looks like. A lot of changes on this team. You've got 40% or more of the roster that is brand new from last season. There are reasons for optimism. But if the Titans are going to take the next step, there are several storylines to watch out for and see how they grow and how good they get in these areas in order to really compete in the AFC South. On Sunday night, on the Electric Power Company, Sunday Sports Central, John and I got into those storylines and our keys for 2016. John, the addition of Andre Johnson certainly is a big storyline heading into the start of training camp, but there are several others on the field. Get us started now with our keys to the Titans in 2016. Steve, my number one key is probably the number one key of a lot of Titans fans. The offensive line needs to gel. They got to open up holes in the running game for DeMarco Murray, Derrick Henry, and most importantly, you got to protect Marcus Mariota. Who's going to be the starting LG? Is it going to be Spain? Is it going to be Gallic? Is it going to be somebody else? You're pretty fine on the outside with your tackles in Lawan and, and Jack Conklin, the number one draft pick, but you got to shore up that middle three in that interior offensive line. The line's going to be important for my first key, which is what's the identity of this football team? We've heard ever since John Robinson took over that he wants to be a more physical team, kind of a smash mouth type of thing. Mike Malarkey has echoed those sentiments. So can this offensive line create those holes to allow DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry to go crazy and allow this team to be a better rushing team and take some of the 
the pressure off of Mariota in the passing game. What's the identity? We're going to find out in the preseason if they can be a smash mouth team like they want. No question about it. My number two key. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Consistent pass rush, right? You got Morgan and Iraq ball on the outside. It's a Dick LeBeau 3 4 defense. You got to get after the quarterback. But maybe just as important, the secondary. They got to be improved. They got to hold their coverage to allow the front seven to come up and eat and get those quarterbacks. So, pass rush, a major key. You're stealing my thunder here because my <laughs> key is the new look secondary back there. They've got a bunch of guys. Jason McCourty is back healthy. He figures to be your shutdown guy on one side of the field. Bryce McCann, Parrish Cox battling for the starting spot on the others. And then you have a bunch of guys who've seen action now. They were young and inexperienced there. But Bleedy Ray Wilson, B.W. Webb, Cody Riggs, and the rookies can all factor into the equation. Their hope there is that quantity will lead to quality, that the competition will make one of these guys or two of these guys step up to be reliable and shore up that back end. Yeah, a lot of those guys need to step up. And my third key, weapons for Mariota. Who's going to be that outside receiver that's going to step up? You bring in Andre Johnson, still a great player, but he's 35 years old. Justin Hunter, where you been? Kendall Wright, we need some consistency out of you. Delaney Walker cannot be the only weapon for Mariota in the passing game. Of course, you got Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray, a couple of guys can catch the ball out of the backfield. No question about that. And my final key then is, is the third time the charm for Mike Malarkey. This is a guy who had an opportunity in Buffalo and had an opportunity in Jacksonville. He's 18 and 39 as a head coach. He gets a third opportunity that many people didn't think he would get here in Tennessee. I feel like he's learned something. I think he's more laid back. He's more of a player's coach this time. And he feels like this is his best situation because of John Robinson, because of the changes to the facility and the roster and all of that. Is it a marriage made in heaven? We'll find out soon enough. But Titans fans are hoping the third time will be the charm for Mike Malarkey. One guy we still haven't seen on the field is Kevin Dodd. In fact, our last good look at him was in the national championship game with Clemson. Dodd was a tear in that game with three sacks, and the Titans took him with the 33rd overall pick. But foot surgery two months ago has him on the physically unable to perform list and frustrated by the delayed start to camp. And I haven't had a chance to uh, showcase what, what I can do yet. I mean, I, I just went through one weekend and got shut down. So, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm ready to get back out there. Kevin Dodd, clearly frustrated by the fact that he's on the physically unable to perform list and it can't be out there right now because he is a rookie and he wants to show his teammates and show his guys exactly what he can do as an outside linebacker for this team. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, we'll get to quarterback Marcus Mariota, his comments after today's practice, hear from the second-year quarterback about being more comfortable in his skin moving into year number two of training camp. And later up on the show, we'll hear from Vanderbilt football coach Derek Mason on Media Day for the Commodores over on West End. Stay tuned. More Sports Live on the way after this.